Hello friends, I am back with Dental Amalgam Part 2 and I would like to mention that in my previous video, some of my viewers, they wanted me to uh, add my own voice. So this is a first attempt from my side and do comment how did you like it, the video, the explanation and I'll be trying my best so that I can explain each and everything in um, great detail so that you can pick it up very nicely. So starting with part 2, I would jump on to low copper alloys. So historically amalgam alloys were low copper alloys. The composition recommended by G.V. Black in the late 18th century remained virtually unchanged until the late 1960s when the high copper amalgams they were introduced. So the composition mainly uh, consisted of silver 63 to 69%, tin 26 to 29%, copper 2 to 5% and zinc 0 to 2%. And the alloys were mainly available as lath cut, spherical or a blend of both. So I'll be telling lath cut and spherical also. Now the low copper alloys had a setting reaction in which the gamma phase, that is your silver tin phase, it reacts with mercury to form gamma 1 and gamma 2 which is a tin mercury phase and unreacted original gamma. So in low copper alloys the problem was mainly concerned with gamma 2. So, uh, in the upcoming alloys which were come, uh, which were there, which came up like high copper alloys, they had eliminated the silver tin phase that is gamma 2. So, mainly in low copper alloys, the setting reaction is when the alloy powder and mercury, they are triturated, the silver and the tin in the outer portion of the particles, they start dissolving into mercury. And simultaneously, the mercury is going to diffuse inside the alloy particles and it starts reacting with silver and tin and it starts forming crystals of silver mercury and tin mercury compounds. So, about 27% of the original silver tin, it remains as unreacted and it was previously mentioned as gamma phase. The properties of the hardened amalgam which we get in the end, it depends on the proportion of the reaction phases. If more unconsumed gamma phase is present, the stronger the amalgam will be. And the gamma 2 phase as I have mentioned, that is the tin mercury phase, it is the weakest and it is the least stable to corrosion. So we have a gamma phase which is the strongest phase and we have a gamma 2 phase which is the weakest phase which are the points you need to take away from this. Now coming on to the microstructure, set amalgam will consist of unreacted gamma particles which I told you which will, which will be employed mainly for the strongness of the amalgam surrounded by a matrix of reaction products gamma and gamma 2, gamma 1 and gamma 2. Now moving on to the high copper alloys. High copper alloys are those alloys in which they have copper ranging from 13 to 30 percent. The majority of amalgam restorations placed currently, used currently, they are mainly high copper. They are preferred because they have improved mechanical properties, resistance to corrosion and they have better marginal integrity. So there are two types of high copper alloys. They are mainly admixed and single composition or unicomposition what we call. Now moving on to the admixed high copper alloys. The admixed alloy was introduced in 1963 and it were originally made by mixing one part silver copper eutectic alloy. High copper spherical particles and that were made to react with two parts silver tin alloy that is low copper lathe cut. So what is a eutectic alloy? It is a one in which components exhibit complete liquid solubility but limited solid solubility. There is completely liquid solubility but the limited solid solubility. Okay, so the silver copper phase exhibits a eutectic structure mainly having silver 71.9% and copper 28.1%. Now the admixed high copper alloys, they can be regular or conventional admixed or they can be unicompositional admixed. Now the regular or conventional admixed alloys, they contain 
irregular spherical particles having different different compositions low copper high copper combination basically and the unique composition admixed contains irregular and spherical particles of uniform composition that is why the name unique composition now uh, moving on to the composition we have 69 percentage of silver 17 percentage of tin 13 percent of copper and 1 percent of zinc so the setting reaction this occurs in two phases the initial is similar to that of copper alloys we are going to have the gamma reacting with the mercury and there is formation of gamma 1 gamma 2 and unreacted now we are going to make the reaction with eutectic phase as well so the second phase of reaction is going to come up with the eutectic that is the silver copper phase that is going to react with gamma and mercury that is going to form gamma 1 gamma 2 and it is going to form a eta phase and the eta phase is the copper tin phase the mercury released from the gamma 2 phase that is going to react further with silver to form the gamma 1 phase so this reaction is going to go on and after one week the gamma 2 phase is reacting completely with the eutectic one and it replaces the gamma 2 phase so basically we get rid of gamma 2 phase so admixed high copper alloys if we talk of the microstructure involved if we talk of the eta phase which we have it is a halo it is a halo in the center surrounded by eutectic particles the final set material consists of core particles of unreacted gamma phase and we have unreacted eutectic phase surrounded by a halo of eta embedded inside a matrix of gamma 1. Now we have the unicomposition high copper alloys. The high copper uh, amalgam it was developed by a Canadian metallurgist Dr. William Udellis in 1963. Now the single composition or unicomposition what we call they are also high copper alloys. They have 60 to 40 percentage of silver, 22 percentage of tin, again 13 to 30 percent of copper and 0 to 4 percentage of zinc. So the unicomposition if we talk of the setting reaction there is a difference in the admixed and the unicomposition is that in the latter if we talk the eutectic phase that is absent. Basically that, uh, that phase is absent the reaction is directly occurring with silver, copper and tin. So in these only the silver is going to react with mercury and the tin remains bound to copper. So you have the alloy particles, you have silver, you have tin, you have copper and that is all going to react with mercury going to form gamma 1, eta and unicomposition alloy particles. So basically where you had the uh, silver copper that is the eutectic phase that is completely eliminated and there is reaction as a whole. The final phase which is formed we have the copper tin phase that is eta and there is no gamma 2 phase. The undesirable gamma 2 does not usually form in this unicomposition alloys. And then we have the eta phase. They are much larger. They are rod shaped than those in admixed amalgam. So the microstructure, the set material is going to consist of particles of unreacted gamma phase surrounded by a mesh of rod shaped eta embedded in a matrix of gamma 1. So in nutshell the carry away points from this whole uh, lecture is that you have to remember all the phases. We have gamma, gamma 1, gamma 2, epsilon and eta. So gamma phase is we know silver 10 phase. It is the strongest of all. The gamma 1 phase it is again the silver mercury phase. It is the noblest of all. We have the gamma 2 that is the tin mercury phase it is the least resistant to tarnish and corrosion so basically the deteriorating properties of amalgam or easily corrosibility will be because of this phase the epsilon phase we have copper tin which is basically cu3sn and we have the eta phase which is cu6sn5 that is more corrosion resistant and quite stronger than gamma 2 now again carry away points uh, the difference between the two 
the high copper and the low copper is definitely in the composition of copper in the content of copper the high copper alloys have copper ranging from 6 to 30 percent low copper have copper less than six percent the mercury required for amalgamation in high copper alloys we need less amount of mercury so that will be less toxicity less associated uh, things with mercury and we need more mercury in low copper ones the setting reaction is quite faster in high copper and it is low in low copper on the contrary the amalgamation speed and energy if we talk of in the high copper it requires high speed high energy for amalgamation because copper has low solubility in mercury so you need to have a good speed but in low copper they require less speed low energy for amalgamation the dormant phase uh, which you are going to get is the eta 1 that is the copper tin phase and there the dormant phase is gamma 1 the silver mercury one tarnish and corrosion the tarnish and corrosion is mainly due to the copper rich phase that is the eta but in low copper as I have told you the tarnish is due to gamma 2 phase creep is less in high copper less than 1% in low copper the creep is higher 1 to 8% Compressive strength is really good in high copper that is 250 to 500 megapascals. In low copper, it's quite low. The compressive strength is low 150 to 350 megapascal. Dimensional change is less in high copper and it is quite more in low copper alloys. So high copper alloys is what we need to prefer. And now we are going to compare the lath cut and the spherical. In the spherical, the particles are spherical. The lath cut, the particles are irregular. In spherical, they are manufactured by the atomization of molten alloy. Basically, inside a chamber, argon gas is there. So, atomization of particles take place till they hit. And so, we get the spherical thing. The lath cut, they are manufactured by milling an annealed ingot of alloy. You mill the ingot, you get different shapes out of it. The spherical, they are more plastic. A contoured matrix is essential to establish a proximal contour. A contoured matrix is required. In the lathe cut, they are less plastic and resist the condensation pressure. In the spherical one, it requires less mercury. It has improved properties. In lathe cut, there is more mercury required. Hence, it has inferior properties. Now, we have certain generations of dental amalgam. We have class 1 in which silver and tin is in the ratio of 8 is to 1. We have class 2 in which silver, tin, copper and zinc is present. Class 3, silver eutectic alloy added to the original alloy. Class 4, the copper is increased to 29%. Class 5, indium is added. We have alloy named indalloy, indisperse alloy. In the mixture of silver, tin and copper and we have class 6 where noble metals are added such as palladium. So that is all for today's lecture. Hope you guys liked it and do share it in the comments and do like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.